top officials of the central bank and representatives of the finance ministry are expected to appear before parliament's finance committee today to answer questions on circumstances that led to the collapse of seven indigenous banks as the committee begins its investigations into the crisis the three-day hearing will afford the committee the opportunity to have first-hand information and bring finality to some controversial matters in connection with the crisis. Chair of the committee, Dr. Makisi Beyabwa, speaking to Joy News, revealed that the committee is excluding directors of the defunct banks from the in-camera hearing. Parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opukugaku joins us from Parliament Live. Joseph. Hello, Joseph. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. The, the issue of the bank's collapse is of huge public interest, and there have been some calls for the hearing to be made public from lawyers, from uh, civil society organizations. So why has the committee or parliament insisted on an in-camera hearing? Well, the committee is insisting that um, they would want to manage the amount of information that emerges eventually. Uh, when they put out the details. Um, one thing I can tell you is that um, the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, is here in Parliament House. He walked into the... Hello, Joseph? ...to think it's not with speaking. So, uh, Dr. Addison, the governor of the Central Bank, is here, and mm. uh, other members of the Finance Committee are present. Uh, but the, 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 the committee members are insisting that um, they would want to give those who would be appearing before them the opportunity to put out as much information as they can without any hindrance, which is why they would want to hold this sitting in camera, mm. and so that then subsequently, depending on what they find, uh, they would give the information, and that would need to get out to other members of the public, they would go ahead and put that out. Mm. Uh, do we know the motive behind the exclusion of bank directors from this hearing? <laughs> Uh, uh, that the committee again is insisting that the, the thing that wouldn't be necessary going into the additional details of wanting to get the directors of the various banks to then uh, come in and provide evidence. Um, let me run you through the outline in terms of those who will be appearing before the committee briefly. Uh, so the confirmation is actually that um, today, this morning, officials of the Bank of Ghana are appearing before the committee. And then later in the day at 2.30, between 2.30 and 4.30 p.m., officials of the finance ministry will be appearing. And then tomorrow, Thursday, they are expecting high water house cases mm. to appear before them at 9.30 a.m. KPMG will be appearing at 11.30 a.m. And then later in the day at 2.30, the officials of the Consolidated Bank Ghana will appear. And then on Friday, they are expecting officials of the Securities and Exchange Commission in the morning at 9.30. And then at 11.30, the National Insurance Commission will be appearing. So mm. that's the confirmation. They are not bringing in officials of the defunct bank because they think that will not be necessary to their investigations and that they would have all the required details. Uh, one other thing that I can tell you is, uh, you recall the committee indicator that they needed some documents to be able to really deal with this particular issue. Mm -hmm. We have a list of the documents that is in their possession based on which they will be investigating the collapse. The first of the six documents is the State of Banking System Report from March 2018. That's the first document. Mm -hmm. uh, the committee will also be relying on the press release that the Bank of Ghana issued on the appointment of an official administrator for Unibank. That was also in March 2018. And then they would also be looking at the press release on the revocation of licenses of the five banks. That's another uh, document that they'll be looking at. And then the speech by the governor on the revocation of the licenses of the five banks. Then he addressed the media uh, during the uh, consolidation of the five banks. And then the fifth document would be the KPMG report on financial conditions and options on Unibank Ghana Limited. And mm. then the fifth document they'll be relying on would be the executive summary of the framework pulled their support. Mm. They would also be looking at that. So the committee is convinced that with all these documents, they would have all the details that they would need. So they would need the directors of the fund bank to appear giving further uh, testimony. All right, Joseph. So are we expecting a daily briefing after uh, the, the, their time with these officials, or are uh, we expecting a full report after uh, the, the, the three day hearing? 
the committee has indicated that once they are done picking officials of uh, the Bank of Ghana and also the Ministry of Finance for today, they would brief the public on what they found based on today's meeting. Okay. And then um, tomorrow they will do the same, on Friday they will do the same, even before they await the full report that they will put out. Because they are trying to emphasize that they are not seeking to prevent details of the investigation going out into the public. They just want to give it appropriately. So yes, they are expecting a briefing after today's meeting with the Bank of Ghana and the Finance Ministry. Mm, finally and briefly, Joseph, we know that Yoko is investigating this and we know that within the Bank of Ghana itself there are some investigations ongoing. Uh, one question that lingers on the minds of many is why is Parliament also probing this matter that's already been probed? So the uh, chairman of the Finance Committee, um, Dr. Makatee, who I had explained that the recommendations that they will be making will be far reaching, even beyond the uh, short term solutions or the short term approaches that we've seen with Yoko investigating and the Ghana investigating at all. And that one possibility, depending on what they find in their investigation, could be them making recommendations in terms of changes in legislation and recommendations on what long term policy measures you know, should be put in place to affect such a collapse. So, they are justification for going ahead with this probe, even as other bodies investigate this, that their committee support will then be able to recommend longer term solutions for a repeat or recurrence of any such banking collapse. Right. Thank you very much, Joseph Abukugapo, there joining us from Parliament. Uh, he still then will bring us all the updates, as he said, as Parliament's Finance Committee probes the collapse of seven indigenous banks he says uh, dr addison the bog governor is in parliament now appearing before the committee we'll bring you all the updates you need to know here on the joy news channel